All right, take your Bibles and turn to John chapter 3. We're going to pick up in verse 14. Let's go to the Lord in prayer before we get started. Lord, I pray that you'll take and uh, bless the services. I pray that you'll teach us some things from your word. I pray that you'll, you'll be magnified in all that we do today. I pray that we'll uplift your name. I pray that we'll glorify you in the way that we should. I pray that we'll give you the honor and glory you deserve. I pray that you'll take and uh, now fill me with your Holy Spirit. Help me as I teach. Give me wisdom in what to say. Uh, I pray that I'll make the teaching of your word clear and plain where everybody can understand it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, verse 14, it says, uh, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now, the serpent in the wilderness that's going back to, I believe it is the story in Numbers where the Lord was wrath with the children of Israel and he sent fiery serpents into the camp because of their complaining. And he smote them with the curse when they were a bit, they were dying. So he tells Moses to erect a pole and put that serpent, make a brazen pole, make a serpent on that pole. And anybody that looked to that serpent, looked to that pole, would live. And it's a great picture of the substitutionary death of Jesus Christ on the cross. Um, the serpent is a picture of sin. The pole was a picture of the cross. The serpent is sin personified. And Jesus Christ was made sin for us. So I want to take a little bit of time here and go into the doctrine of the substitu- not just the substitutionary death, but what all Jesus Christ did in the substitutionary death how he became sin for us, how he went to hell for us, and the sacrifice of not only his body, his soul, not only his body, but also his soul and his spirit. Uh, We have three parts in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We have a body and soul and a spirit, and all three of those needed redeemed. And the Lord was a substitute for all three parts of us. Now take your Bible and turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Let's get verse 18. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry, ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God, for he hath made him, Jesus Christ, to be sin for us. Now, circle that us and write your name right there. Jesus Christ made sin for you and for me. I have my name written there, Sam. Sin for Sam Witter. Who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now that substitutionary death, you got his righteousness and he got your sin. He took your sin upon Himself. And that's the substitute that He did. Now look at uh, Galatians chapter 3. Look at Galatians chapter 3 again. And look at verse 13. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made what? A curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. So he became a curse for us. He became sin for us. Who knew no sin? He became a curse. 
when he was praying there in Gethsemane, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. That was a man crying who had never committed a sin that was fixing to become sin for us. Sin had never touched Jesus Christ and He was going to become sin for us. His sacrifice was a lot more than just the affliction that He bore on the cross, which was His body being sacrificed, His body being broken for us. He didn't just sacrifice His body, He sacrificed His soul. Take your Bible and turn to Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53. The whole chapter of Isaiah is the prophecy of the substitutionary death of Jesus Christ. It's a great chapter. It's a great chapter to uh, preach the gospel from. But look at Isaiah 53. Let's just go down through this chapter and point out the substitutionary death of Jesus Christ. Then I'll get to the one with the soul. Verse 1, Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as root out of dry ground. He hath no form or comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Now look ye here. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of what? God. He wasn't just smitten of the Roman Jews. He was smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. With his stripes we were healed. Now that's the sacrifice of his body at the cross. That's the crucifixion. So he sacrificed his body body as a payment for our sins. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and his sheep before the shearer is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he hath had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his, what? Soul an offering for sin. Now there's his soul. Not just his body, but his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed and shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with great and he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he hath poured out his soul unto death and he was numbered with transgressors and he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Now take your Bible and turn to Psalms chapter 22. Psalms chapter 22. Look at verse 6. Psalms chapter 22. Verse 6. Now here's a prophecy. He says, But I am a worm, and no man a reproach of men, and despised of the people. And this is a prophecy about Jesus Christ. Now look down at verse 20. Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling, from the power of the dog. Look at verse 12. Many bulls have compassed me, strong bulls of Bashan having beset me round. Well then bulls is going to be spiritual. Spiritual ones. But he says, take not my soul. 
Now, what did Jesus Christ say was the sign that he was going to give to the Jews? The one sign. He says, I'll give you one sign. Sign of Jonas. And he says, in the heart of what? The earth. The heart of the earth. Sign of Jonas. So you have soul, you have body, and you have spirit. Now that soul was going to be in the heart of the earth. It was going to be a worm. It says he's a worm there in Psalms. Take your Bible and turn to Mark chapter... Now let's see what this worm is. Mark 9.44. Mark 9.44. says, let's pick up verse 30, 43. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter in life maimed than having two hands to go into what? Hell. Into the fire that never shall be quenched. If you're wondering what hell is, it's not just the grave. He was three days and three nights in the tomb. His body was. But where was his soul? Now look what it says. Verse 46, Where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. You know what's going to happen to a man's soul? is going to become like a worm in that fire. Take your Bible and turn back to Jonah. Jonah chapter... I'm going to have to look this one up in Jonah, but I want it to say where Jonah prays. And he says, Out of the belly of hell cried I. Jonah chapter... It's going to be chapter 2. Let's pick up verse... Well, it's verse 2. Then Jonah prayed out of the Lord has gone out of the fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me out of the belly of what? Hell, cried I. And thou heardest my voice. All right. Now look down at verse... uh, I went down to the bottom of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. I thought he was in a well... He's saying, no, out of the belly of hell, cried I. Soul's in hell. The body's only in the fish. Okay, so what's that type of? The sign of Jonas is not just the type of the substitutionary death of the body, but the substitutionary death of the soul going to hell. So what happened to Jesus Christ was his soul was made an offering for sin and went to hell. And his body was a substitutionary death for our body, and it went to the grave and corruption. They both died. Both his body and his soul died. Jesus Christ literally went to hell for you and deposited your sins in hell. And what does he have the keys of? Death and hell. Neither death nor hell could hold him. He walked back out of both. He came back out of both. Is his soul still in hell? Nope. He came back out. But he became sin for you. He paid for your sins in hell. And he paid for the sins of your body. Now my soul is saved already, but I'm waiting for the redemption of my body. Why? Because he's already paid it. What about his spirit? He has a body and soul and spirit. What does he cry when he's on the cross? For into thy hands I commend my spirit. You know what happens to the spirit of man? It goes back to God. Is what Ecclesiastes says. The spirit of man goes back to God. The beast goes down to the earth, but the spirit of man, which is a different spirit, goes back to God. And that spirit goes back to God. So, his substitutionary death was in all three parts he became sin for you who knew no sin. It's amazing what the Lord did for you. And that's what that picture of the serpent on the pole is. You know what the picture is a type of? It's a type of the devil. Sin incarnated. You know what the Antichrist is called? The man of sin. The son of perdition in Second Thessalonians. Now take your Bible, let's look at some things about the serpent. How the devil is a serpent here. 
Well, we know the devil's a serpent in Genesis chapter 3. Y'all have read uh, Genesis chapter 3, right? Please tell me everybody's read Genesis chapter 3 here <laughs> about the fall of man. I mean, uh, yeah, most people get that in Sunday school. I mean, sometimes I assume too much of Christians. But please don't let me assume of you that you've read these basic Bible stories and you have not. If you haven't, make it a goal to read through your Bible this year. To at least read these stories. It's not just a fairy tale story that has no significance. Every chapter in that Bible has something for your learning. And it's more important than any history book or any English book or any math book that you learned in the first 12 years of the 12 years of grade school that you went through. It's more important. You need to learn that. That is a history book written about human nature from God's viewpoint. And it's written for your learning. Yeah, you should have read it if you haven't read it. But Genesis chapter 3 talks about the serpent. But let's look at a few other references here. Also on the serpent. How that personifies the devil. Uh, that's a type of Jesus Christ dying on the cross. Uh, take your Bible and turn to... Um, we want Isaiah chapter... Well, the first mention of the uh, curse, the first time the word curse appears in the Bible is Genesis 3.14. And that's the cursing of the serpent. So the curse and the serpent and the tree go together. I didn't get the notes on this, but that tree is probably an oak tree. And when you study the trees that are cursed, the cross was probably made out of an oak tree. And there's a reason for that too. But that's a different study. I, I forgot to write the references down on that, but that just came to my mind. Um, Isaiah chapter 14. And let's look at verse 29. Isaiah 14. Look at verse um, 29. Rejoice not thou whole Palestina, because the rod of him that smote thee is broken, for out of the serpent's root shall come forth a cockatrice, and its fruit shall be a fiery flying serpent. You know what you have there? You have a serpent, you have a cockatrice, which is a type of a serpent, a fiery flying serpent. So you have three serpents there. You know what that is? That's the trinity of the devil. You say there's a trinity of the devil? Yes. God gives them the ability to be a trinity. And the tribulation, it's the false prophet, the beast. False prophets, type of the Holy Spirit. Copycat of the Holy Spirit. The beast is a copycat of Jesus Christ. The devil in the flesh. The dragon is a copycat of the Father. All three of them are serpents. They're all three serpents. When it comes to the devil, he's probably a Assyrian Jew. Now, Assyria is in the north part of the land of Palestine. So you have Mediterranean Sea here. Then up here is Dan. And Israel comes down like this. How many of you have ever seen map? And it always says, Dan to Beersheba. Dan to Beersheba. How many of you have ever noticed that? Yeah. Okay, Dan's up here. You know, what country is up in this area? you got Syria and Assyria up here. Isn't Assyria right here? How many of you all know your... Where is Assyria at? Assyria is on the, up in the north part on the right-hand side, I think. It's where Assyria is. All right, so you have Syria right here. Right there's Syria, which is Assyria was part of it right up in here. And I think it went out into part of Iraq, the biblical Assyria. If you read the prophecies, it talks about the Assyrian coming into land as or as prophecy of the Antichrist. Dan there's a chapter in the book of Judges about Dan being the first tribe. He steals idols from Ephraim and a Levite in Judges. 
and he takes them idols and they're the first one to go into idolatry. And they're in idolatry basically their entire existence. Then you get to the 12 tribes that has the seal put in on their forehead that's protected in the tribulation. Guess which tribe's missing? Dan. Dan's not listed in that list. It says Joseph and Manasseh. Manasseh's Joseph's son. And then it adds Levi in there to get 12. But Dan's not in there. Dan's left unprotected. Then you get to the prophet. Now this is where I'm tying it all together. You get to the prophecy about Dan that Jacob gives to his son. And what does it say about Dan? He's an adder that biteth at the hills. He's a snake. He's a snake. You know uh, one of them golden calves where it was set up? Dan. North Ark, the tribe of Dan. That Jeroboam sets up. That caused Israel to sin. There's a connection there. There's a connection. Uh, a lot of people say, oh, well, Obama was the Antichrist. Oh, no, he was not. Come on. Really? And they, they try and make the Antichrist come out of America. Now, America ain't going to win place or show in the tribulation. We're, we're folding. There's a reason for that. We're not going to be a world power. We're, we're not going to win place or show in the tribulation. Matter of fact, we'll probably, one the first couple of years of famine, we'll probably just tear each other apart. <laughs> we'll be so worried about our own problems, we won't have time to deal with the Middle East. You, you're seeing America get removed from power. That's what you're seeing. God's allowing that. Uh, you better wake up. You're getting close. You're getting close. Where's the world power going to come from? It's going to come from ten countries here. Right in the Middle East. It's going to come from this area. And that Assyria is going to be a small country that's going to rise to a world power in the tribulation. This is a sidetrack, okay, this is a sidetrack off the serpent. But I'm showing how that serpent is connected with the tribe of Dan and with Assyria up in this part of the country. world. Where's the Antichrist going to come from? Right there. You want to put a mark where he's going to come from, he's going to be right there. It's going to be of that race. He's a copycat of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to have Jewish blood. Son of perdition. Study Judas Iscariot. Who was he? He was a Syrian Jew. Judas Iscariot was a Syrian Jew. That's who the Antichrist will be. He's a serpent. So you have the three serpents there. They're a type of the devil. Once again, look at the devil's a type of the serpent. The connections there. Take your Bible and turn to Isaiah chapter 27. Isaiah chapter 27, look at verse 1. And that day the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, the piercing what? Serpent. Even Leviathan, the crooked serpent. And he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. Okay? So he's a serpent and a dragon. You know what a dragon is? Now, when they take and make them Chinese dragons, you know what that Chinese dragon is? He's, he's not like what we picture this flying dragon with the two wings and the body and kind of a long body with the tail and then two legs coming out. That may have been the serpent before he fell and had to eat up the dust of the ground. That Chinese dragon looks like this. And then he's got his head. And then sometimes you put wings on him. He's a serpent that flies. That's what he is. He's a serpent with wings. He breathes fire out of his mouth. Okay? He's called Leviathan. He lives in the deep. The dragon that lives shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. That's the serpent. The dragon and the serpent are one. In Job, Job 41, that's describing the devil there when it describes Leviathan, the serpent, piercing serpent. That's the devil. That's the devil that lives in the sea. Say, where is that sea? 
Well, he's in the deep. And it's a different deep than what you think about. Right up here, right down here. You go to Genesis 1, that firmament is divided. And he divides the waters from the waters and he puts the planets, the stars, and the moons in between the firmament and the firmament's water. So you have a sun, moon, galaxies here. You got a body of water there. It's frozen on its face and you have the third heaven up here. And that serpent's below the third heaven in that body of water. He's a sea serpent. Everybody sits there and thinks that that dragon that's in the sea is in the ocean, the Atlantic or Pacific. No, that's a different body of water. Things up there. Up above the universe. Frozen, deep. And in Revelation 14, there's a war in heaven. Which heaven? You have three heavens. You have the third, you have the second, and then you have the first. First, second, and third heaven. That first heaven... Seven is our atmosphere, where the birds and bees fly, and the planes roam. Then we went to the moon, and we stepped out of our bounds. We weren't supposed to go there. We got up to that second heaven. And there's something that's up there, so we call them um, astronauts, nautical, water. You know what they're looking for? They're looking for water up there. That's what they want to find. They want to find water. Boy, they better hope they don't find that water. Is there something in that water? There's a serpent. A big old serpent in that water. It's a dragon. There'll be war in heaven. That serpent will be cast out down to the earth. You know where the devil physically abides right now? Take your Bible and turn to Revelation. Well, this is a sidetrack on the serpent. But, you know, you ought to understand your adversary. You ought to understand the power of the devil. This is what, what is a type of what Jesus Christ became. Now look at Revelation chapter 14. For you, as a serpent on a pole. Now look. So, so how many of you know what the medical ensign is? Two serpents on a pole with wings facing each other. Two serpents. One would be Jesus Christ, one would be the devil. That's what they tried showing. That's why they put two of them up there. He became sin for us that we might be healed. The devil's the original serpent. All right. Uh, look at Revelation chapter. Uh, now, no man thought that up. No man thought that up. There's a spirit putting that in him. You, you know, you watch all this nonsense on Hollywood and stuff. I sit there and watch it. I see things in that after studying the Bible. I'm like, there is no way that Hollywood producer understands the Bible well enough to mess with it like that. There's a spirit behind it. There's a spirit. Now take your Bible and turn to uh, Revelation chapter where's the war in heaven it's uh oh i think it's verse chapter 13 no it's not 13 it's uh somebody help me out here is it 12 or 13 uh chapter yeah it's chapter 12 and let's look at uh, verse 3. There appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of what? The stars of heaven. And it cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who is ruled all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. That's Jesus Christ. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon 
fought in his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old, what? Serpent. Serpent. Called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now when does that happen? Is this prophecy or is this past? This is prophecy. This is future. Okay? Which means he's up there right now. You, you know, people think that he's stuck in the hell down in the middle of the earth. Oh no, he's active. He travels to and he travels. Where hast thou been, Satan? Traveling to and fro. On the face. He goes back and forth. He ain't bound yet. He's cast out of the third heaven, but he ain't cast down to the earth yet. Now look what it says. I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is the salvation and strength in the kingdom of our gods and powers of his Christ, for the accusers of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. What's he doing? He's traveling up there day and night. Accusing you. He's going back and forth. He's the accuser of the brethren. And they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens that ye that dwell in them. Woe to what? The inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth he hath but a short time. He has three and a half years. That's the middle of the tribulation when that happens. He's cast down to that earth in the middle of the tribulation. That happens right at that three and a half mark. And then all hell breaks loose on this earth. Literally. Literally. You, this earth haven't, hasn't seen nothing yet. It ain't seen nothing yet. But that's who Jesus Christ became. Like to the devil personified sin. The serpent on the pole. You go back and you read them fiery, fiery serpents biting. You, you know who caused sin in the life of the Christian? The devil. you got to look to the cross. You look to the cross. You look to Jesus Christ. Why? Because He became the serpent. He took on the sins and the bite of the serpent. And He takes that sin and you're healed by looking. Look and live, my brother live. Look to Jesus now and live. Look to him. He took it for you. But that's uh anyway. I bet you didn't know that was in John chapter three, verse fourteen. <laughs> let's uh let's take a break there. Now that's some strong meat. That's some strong meat. Let's get into some deeper things in the Bible. Strong meat's good once in a while. All right, let's uh take a break there.